There's a quick video looking at some more advanced features of using Flow with Spring XD. So I'm running that in this Chrome browser and I'm going to jump to the Create Streams tab and the first video showed how to build a simple stream. Here we're going to build something a bit more complicated. Uh, I'm just going to type this in. Sometimes it's, it's quicker than drawing it. So I've got a very basic stream here. Time transform filter log and I'm going to use the tap module. And the way tap works is you can drop it onto what you want to tap into. So I want to tap into transform. So listen into the output of the transform module. So as I drop it, it gets its channel defined. You'll see if we open the properties to this. And the syntax looks like this. So tapping into a stream, then the name of the stream and the name of the module. Now, we filled in stream one here, and what happened when I dropped that module was that the first stream was given a name. It didn't have one, but it had to have one for us to tap into it, so we filled one in for it. Uh, we can edit that if we want, um, but we need to edit that as well to keep them in step. And if I want to change what I'm tapping into, I just drop, drop it on other modules. You see I dropped it onto filter. This changed to filter. Let's go back to transform. Or I could edit the text down here. Now we've still got a red X here because this second stream isn't well defined. We haven't said what we're going to do with the data we've tapped. I'm just going to put that in the log as well. So now we've got two streams defined. So you don't just have to use this canvas to def define individual streams. You can define groups of streams that interrupt together. And when I press create stream what will happen is that I'll get a line here for every stream I want to define. And it picked up that we'd given a name to that first stream and it's pre-filled it here. I just need to give a name to my tapper stream and I could choose to deploy this now or not and press create. And if I define three, four, five, six streams, they'd all appear here. So with that, if you jump back to definitions, you'll see they are ready to go. I could deploy those and they do their work. What else can we do? Uh, let's look at job support. So this is all existing admin UI stuff. You'll see we have no job definitions, but we've got plenty of job modules. Let's create a definition based on the FTP HDFS job. Call it my job, and I don't want to deploy it, and I'm just going to submit to create it. Now back in definitions, you'll see we have my job defined, but it has this long textual definition. If I jump back to streams, you'll see on the create stream tab, there is now a new section the job definitions. So I can use that in a stream. So I can drag it out and you'll see it constructs the right syntax for using a job as a source. And I'm just going to cop out and listen into it. So now we are tapping into the output of that job. I'm going to send it to log. If the job had multiple output streams we, of data, we could pick which one we want to listen to by setting the events property. Oops. Down there. Uh, if instead I wanted to use the job as a output, I might, for example, do something that triggers a job. So I could set a cron string and periodically trigger something. If I take the same job and drop it on the end, you see that it's changed the syntax representation. When it was used as a source, it's a tap. When it's used as an output, it's a queue. And we are we are free to deploy that now. So you can use job definitions in any streams you construct on the flow palette. The last thing we'll look at is composite modules. So let's take a pair of modules, say HTTP and transform. Now that's not a valid stream because there is no sync on it, but it is a valid composite module. It's a new source composite module because it's a source with the processor on it. So you can still treat it like a source. So I test create composite module and uh, let's call it my comp. So the UI tells us that it's been created and now it has actually appeared in the palette. If we scroll down here you'll see that my comp is available as a composite module source and connect up to things and if I look at the properties of it you'll see that it's got all the properties of HTTP and all the properties of transform for us to set. 
so you can work with composite modules in Flow as well. So I hope that gives you an idea of what's possible with taps, jobs, and composite modules. Thanks for watching.